All right, welcome back. So this this is the big GPS speed test. Not not that big. <laughs> I only got so so much time to mount GPSs and fly and do logs and there's just um, uh, just so much that could be done and the the, the job is almost endless. Uh, however, I did do some stuff. I came up with some pretty nice results and uh, uh, I'm going to share those with you. So the, the, the purpose of doing some tests is that I've, when I'm flying these copters around very quickly, I'm generally flying in acro and I want to be able to hit RTL come home. So I don't want to do the, the beta flight thing, you know, where's my quad, bring it in. Oh, whoops, lost radio link, down it goes. I just want, I want all the goodness of RG Pilot to make my life easy when I'm flying around having fun. So I, I, my basic use case, fly around in acro, hit RTL, come home. Now, what I've observed several times is that that doesn't always go according to plan. Uh, and I've had some pretty uh, serious overshoots in particular on RTL and um, some pretty serious uh, height changes, uh, which I've also seen similarly when flying fast auto missions, um, uh, which is my second use case. So I want to be able to fly auto missions very, very, at very high speeds. Now, uh, of course, in both those cases, it's the EKF controlling the copter. And if it's doing a poor job, why is it doing a poor job? Well, generally, it's because the sensor data is not reliable. And uh, in this case, the, the two sets of sensor data that are important are um, the IMU sensor data, so sort of inertial navigation uh, and the GPS sensor data so sort of absolute position and so on. Um, some of the other sensors are important but for the purposes of discussion I think that those are the two important things to see show. Now I've spent a long time working on the inertial the the IMU data uh, and in particular reducing noise which can really throw off the EKF estimates and I would say I've got that to a really pretty good point. So even at high speed, the noise experienced by um, the IMUs and hence what the EKF sees is, is relatively low. I mean, it's still, there's still issues, but it's relatively low. Um, now, but what I have seen is EKF, uh, sorry, GPS estimates that go way out. Uh, and, um, uh, when you get a sensor going not bad but off like that it then becomes well you know what do you trust and the EKF gets a little bit confused and, and it eventually recovers and there's various things you can do to sort of recover but I'd rather it didn't it didn't get thrown out in, in uh, uh, at all and so um, one of the things I sort of look saw when sort of sharing logs back and forth in, with Paul in particular was that the the accuracy reported by the GPSs that I was using was fairly low at times and in particular the speed accuracy was quite low or, or got quite low and uh, what I've generally done is I've flown around with these sort of copters this is a little three inch and they've got these little Matek pucks on them uh, and this is the M8 version. Uh, and then they've also got an M10 version that looks a little bit like that. And, you know, yeah, you sort of get what you pay for to some, some degree. These are small GPSs with small antenna. Um, uh, and so, you know, you're not, you're not expecting to get super high accuracy. But I wanted to sort of figure out, well, what's the best that you could do in these smaller copters, uh, given the sort of limits of size in particular. Um, for instance, uh, Holybro recently sent me their F9P Rover, 
I mean, it's a monster. There's no way I can fit that on, on this copter. Certainly not, not my three inch. So, uh, so I wanted to test small GPSs that would fit um, on small copters and also uh, see whether there were any sort of things I could do in terms of orientation that might help. And so my basic plan was to try a range of GPSs with some different orientations and see where I got to. And uh, to take that a little bit further, I, I, my friend Justin printed off or designed some GPS holders for me that are quite cute. So um, you've got this sort of standard one that is that holds these Holy Bro micro GPSs. And then I've got one that holds a Holy Bro and a, a Matek, and then one that holds a Matek at different angles. And then one that holds it. So anyway, lots of things to try. Um, in terms of the GPSs I was going to try, uh, Obviously I wanted to use the Matex as my baseline because that's sort of my go-to puck that, that has worked quite well for me in the past and I use a lot. So I wanted to use that as a baseline, but I also wanted to try some of these other GPSs that are a little bit larger, but just to see what the difference was like. Um, and uh, Holybro kindly sent me a number of them. So they sent me their M10, micro M10, which is that sort of size. And you can see there's one in my um, five inch here. They also sent me a micro M9N, which is a slightly different GPS. And then also a relatively expensive F9P, which is, this is the micro F9P. It's still pretty big, but it can just about make a stand for it and uh, can fly with that on the back. Um, and uh, my my kind of process here was to fly essentially uh, fast auto missions and compare the outputs. Um, and one of the things I was really trying to do was hit get over the magic 4G limit. So all of these GPSs, um, you have to select a kind of kinematic model for how, how it does its estimates. And uh, it all depends on the use case and you're sort of trading different uh, different accuracies that way. Um, in the case of copters, you need to pick a 3D model because obviously you're moving in three dimensions. And you also need to pick the, the sort of gravity limits. Um, and uh, Ublox GPSs, which these are all, all Ublox GPSs, their highest gravity limit is a, is a 4G model. Um, so I was keen to see what happened when you got over that 4G limit to see how well or badly they coped. And also how well or badly they coped at high speed, particularly because obviously if they're burning around at high speed, you, you know, you, you, they're, they're angled at like this and the GPS is basically facing forward rather than up. So does, how much does that affect the signal? Hence why having, maybe I can have two GPSs so that when you're burning around, one is still facing up. Um, so that was the theory. And uh, this sort of short series of videos, I'm just gonna share the results with you. So thanks for watching.